Welcome to our webinar to discuss our Writing for Film and Television program at the Toronto Film School. Speaking to you right now, myself, I'm the director of the Toronto Film School at Yorkville University. My name's John Hunter, and to my right is Adam Till. He's the program coordinator for the writing program. Adam started his career as a lawyer, but soon after passing the bar, he moved to uh, his passion, which was writing, and enjoyed some early success with a number of short films, including Leo, which was admitted to TIFF, and won the Grand Prix at the Little Big Films competition. Adam then moved on to television, where he worked with Adam McGowan to adapt Adam McGowan's film, The Adjuster, into a tel television series, a project that was later opened on Showtime. Adam's TV credits also include Billable Hours, a sitcom he co-created. Billable Hours won the Gemini Award for Best Writing in a Comedy Series in 2009. Adam's other writing credits include the Lifetime movie, Too Late to Say Goodbye, which debuted on LMN and TMN in 2010. Too Late was based on a novel by Anne Rule and starred Rob Lowe and Lauren Holly. More recently, Adam wrote feature film, the feature film, Perfect Sisters, directed by Stan Brooks, starring Mia Servino and Abigail Breslin. In early two. 2016, Adam sold an original sitcom entitled Meds to 20th Century Fox. And Adam continues to work on new projects and work with us here at the Toronto Film School. Thank you, John. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning into this webinar. Uh, as John mentioned, I'm, the, uh, I'm a writer producer out of Toronto. I'm also the program coordinator for the writing and film and television program at uh, Toronto Film School and Yorkville University. Uh, what I wanted to do today is talk uh, a bit about our online program. Uh, from what I understand, most of you are interested in attending that if you're not already signed up. So whether you are uh, already committed for January or April, or if you are just thinking about it for the future, I wanted to give you an idea of what the program looks like, uh, how we designed it, what the goals are, what you can expect over the next uh, several terms. Uh, tell you a little bit about our faculty, um, and uh, at the end, I think we're going to open it up for some questions, see if people have anything they want to ask uh, to follow up. Uh, so uh, just uh, a little bit more about myself, though that was comprehensive, and thank you, John, for uh, my bio. Um, I started life as a lawyer, and uh, you know, I'm not sure where a lot of you are in, in your lives in terms of what you want to do career-wise, but uh, it was not my passion. I had been pushed into law because I was always doing well in English in school and it was you know not really a viable thing to be a screenwriter but I always loved movies and uh, while I was working as a lawyer I, I started to uh, just write on my own and initially trying to write short stories and novels and I realized I was writing mostly visual dialogue screen stuff and eventually I, I finished a screenplay I found an entertainment lawyer that uh, worked at that law firm he was starting his own talent agency he liked my work he brought me in and uh, he was the one who really started me off. His name's Michael Levine. Uh, he uh, remains a major force in the entertainment world. Uh, and he helped me get my start with the short films and eventually packaging Billable Hours, which was a show loosely based on my own experiences as a lawyer. Um, so, I mean, I guess my message is, there's a real industry here. This is not just a pie-in-the-sky dream. There's, yes, there's the famous you know, writers and writer-directors that you've heard of. There's the Charlie Kaufman's and the Martin Scorsese's and the Quentin Tarantino's, uh, but there's also, you know, the rest of the 99% of us who are working writers, writer producers, um, who are, you know, just making a, a living, you know, day to day with work on various series or work on various films. Uh, and if it's something that you love to do, uh, I dread it every day when I was a lawyer. I wake up every morning now excited, either to go to work uh, on a screenplay or to come to school and uh, work with the students. Uh, or work with the students online. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure where everybody is, but I just want to assure you this is a real path. And when I started out, there was really nothing set to help you start a career as a screenwriter. I, I happened to find some great mentors, including Adam McGoin, as John mentioned, uh, Sheldon Larry, who was a director who was directing David E. Kelly projects at the time, Leslie Bellsberg, who was John Landis's producing partner. And they, out of the kindness of their hearts, liked me, started to work with me, and mentored me. Uh, but when time came to create this program, we thought, what's the best way to actually you know, create a structured school program, whether people want to do it on campus or online, 
uh, to start people up, to get them all the background they need in terms of the language of screen, the norms, the formatting norms, the structural norms in different areas, uh, and get them really as prepared as possible uh, to enter the screenwriting world. Uh, and we know there's going to be some people who are taking this because they just love it, and they're, they're hobbyists, and they maybe don't intend to work, and that's fine too. It's just a great amount of information, a great sort of preparation for those of you who are interested. How does this all really work? How can I get involved? And how can I get going in a career? Uh, so what I want to start out by doing is taking you through the program, uh, the online program, um, uh, not in too much depth, but just to give you an overview of, of how it's designed. Um, the first couple of terms are sort of setup terms where you take introductory screenwriting, introductory story editing. This is really to give you the, the fundamental concepts in screenwriting. You sort of have to do this brain shift where you've written prose all your, all your life and now you're writing for the screen. You're not writing for someone to read this anymore. It's a blueprint for a production team to create a film or a television show from what you've written. So, uh, you know, we focus on activity to talk about or to, to uh, reveal things about characters and story, uh, showing versus telling a lot of these core concepts, which sounds, you know, simple when you say them, but to actually incorporate them into your writing is a bit of, a, of an exercise. So we spend a couple of terms uh, working on these in the introductory scripts and story editing courses. Uh, there's also a couple of broadcast courses, uh, which basically are the first one is news writing, and the second one is short format, so commercials, PSAs, corporate videos. These are important, uh, one, because there's a ton of work in these areas, and a lot of our students have gone on uh, as graduates to, to get their first jobs as uh, commercial writers or corporate video uh, writer producers. We focus on three simultaneous streams, uh, feature film, sitcom, and one-hour drama. Uh, in these courses, you will be uh, undertaking the, the core uh, pieces of your portfolio. Uh, when you leave this program, we really do want you to have a comprehensive portfolio that's got everything in it that can get you to agents, get you the, to producers, get you started off uh, ha having the, the projects you need to show people on a case-by-case -case and, and get your career started. So in sitcom, uh, you'll start off creating late-night materials, um, and these are the same materials that you would create or you would submit if you were applying for the, the Jimmy Kimmel show. If they had a call for writers and they said, all right, we want to see packages, they would ask for three desk jokes, three monologue jokes, uh, a desk runner, a sketch. Uh, all of these assignments will double as portfolio pieces, so you're never really working in a, in a theoretical vacuum. You're always working towards something practical that's going to help with your career. So you start off with these late-night materials. Um, you move on to a spec sitcom, so you write an episode of a an existing sitcom that you like, a Simpsons or a Modern Family, and then finally on to an original sitcom including pitch materials which will, uh, which will be a mini bible that goes through all of the uh, essential elements of, of your series. Um, the key with all of these courses uh, in the major streams is we try to do things the way they're done in the industry and uh, the major feature is the story editor relationship. You'll be working with classmates and with your instructors uh, from concept through to beat sheet, so uh, a st point by point story summary of your episode or your film, uh, onto an outline or treatment, and then finally to a draft. And at each stage, you'll get notes and feedback from colleagues and from your instructor, both um, in a notes, you know, online notes format and also in, a, in real time forums. Um, and this is how things are done in the, in the real world. This is why there are 20 writers sometimes on one television series, a lot of brains together on one project uh, really takes things in other directions, gets you thinking about things that you might not have thought about otherwise, and gets things really tight. Um, so, you know, to the extent that this process uh, does go the, the way the industry does and does have this rigorous note process, you're going to end up with really finely tuned, polished pieces that I think you'll even be surprised that you were capable of going in the places uh, that you end up going. And again, you hold the pen uh, as the, the core writer on every project. You still decide what happens the same way a head writer would in a writing room. Uh, but it's nice to have those 20 brains or so on every project and your instructor, of course. Um, so that's the setup in, uh, in the sitcom stream. The final term of the sitcom stream, we are looking at letting you actually cast a, a, or uh, prepare a scene from your sitcom for shooting, so cast from our acting program, we have a casting workbook type setup where you can see our actors online, decide who you like, and we're hoping to possibly at the end let you uh, direct them in, a, uh, in the execution of your scene. Um, same uh, type of format for the drama stream. The, uh, the, the stream starts off with a spec one-hour drama, so you write an episode of Bones or Grey's Anatomy or whatever 
uh, show you're liking these days. Again, from concept through to beat sheet, treatment and then draft. Uh, getting story editor feedback from your colleagues and your instructor. On to an original, including pitch materials. And then finally, again, in the final term, you cast uh, a scene uh, from our acting program's casting workbook, and you uh, rehearse and hopefully prepare that scene with the actors uh, in, the final, uh, in the final days of the program. Uh, in feature film, it's a little bit different. You spend the entire stream. So these are four course streams. You'll spend four courses uh, working on a feature film. That's a big undertaking. You, you know, these are generally 90 to 105 pages is what we're, we're shooting for. Um, again, concept through to beat sheet, through to treatment, through to, through to act one, act two, act three, and then finally a complete draft uh, with the goal at the end being some sort of interactive. We're looking at a, a, a likely a table read with uh, actors from our acting program uh, done in real time with you to supervise as the writer. Uh, so, you know, along with going through the process of the industry process of writing these uh, projects, you also get to see them brought to life at the end. Uh, and that's the important thing here. Again, we're not writing in a vacuum for these scripts to be written or for uh, these scripts to be read. We're writing because we want these brought to life uh, and eventually made. Uh, so those are the three major streams that you work on simultaneously. <clears throat> and again, you, you, you leave with a ton of, of portfolio pieces uh, to submit to people and to uh, get your career started. We also pepper in a few business courses uh, through the program so you have a sense of the business realities when you sign that first writing contract or staff writer agreement or you option that first feature film. Uh, it's important to know these things. It's important to know how the funding system in Canada works. Uh, we are generally the, lar the, the most heavily government funded film industry in the world, uh, meaning our government puts the most money into making sure Canadian film and television is made. Uh, largely because we're so close to Hollywood, we don't want to have a, an entire talent drain. Uh, and that's great for Canadian writers because very often uh, American productions come up here to shoot and they, they often want a Canadian writer or a Canadian talent on their projects. Uh, and there's all kinds of ways to access funding uh, as soon as you graduate, whether it's Arts Council grants or through the Harold Greenberg Fund or the CMF, the Canada Media Fund. So we want to teach you all about those things so you're, you're really set and ready to go. Uh, and the developers of this program who have been mentors of mine uh, you know, through my career, we really just all thought about what we would all want to know starting off our careers as screenwriters and hopefully that's what we brought to this program. Um, the graduates from the, um, from the campus program have been doing amazing things. Uh, we have one graduate who has uh, just completed about 120 episodes of television now uh, at the Family Channel working in the writing rooms at the Next Step and the Music and Lost and Found. Um, another writer who's, who's a little bit short, short of him, I think he's in the 90 to 100 episodes range. Uh, and they've gone the staff writing route. They're working, uh, working for Family Channel in that capacity. We have uh, uh, another writer who is uh, done, doing a rewrite on a film about fem female MMA fighters currently that's going to be released by Universal. Uh, they were thinking straight to video. Now they're saying maybe a limited theatrical release. Uh, we have uh, a graduate who just got hired full-time uh, to work at Ubisoft as a video game writer. Uh, we have graduates on the business side. Some people leave the program and say, I understand the business side. I want to work, uh, work as a network executive or a studio executive. Instead of being the one taking the notes, I want to give the notes. Uh, so we have Ralph Ortega, who was uh, left here, initially became an agent, a talent agent, and then I was moved on to Guru Studios, where he's an executive and uh, is working on the business side of things. Uh, so the graduates have really gone everywhere, and the story background that we give um, is really fundamental to so many jobs in the industry. Understanding how story works, how it works for different formats uh, is key. If you think about the development process, uh, I'm sure many of you know that uh, the, the shows that you see on television have been weaned out from hundreds of possibilities. You know, Most scripts are rejected, the, the ones that make it through, some of them get to pilot, but most don't. And then of all the pilots that are made, some of those get to series. Uh, same thing in the feature film world. Uh, so many projects considered, developed, uh, very few finally made. Uh, so in this development process, you need people to read scripts, assess scripts, give notes on scripts, who understand story and who understand the uh, story for the various formats and various genres that, uh, that they're, they're dealing with. Uh, this program will give you that background, will give you that story language so that you can go out and work on either side of things uh, depending on what suits you. Um, and you'll be learning from some of the best people, I think, uh, that, that are, are doing this in Canada. I'll talk a little bit about our faculty. 
Uh, John talked about me a little. Uh, I will be teaching, uh, and, and I'm teaching currently uh, uh, the introductory scripts courses and uh, some of the comedy screen, uh, stream. Uh, we have uh, on the one-hour drama side David Gervich. David was the uh, the head of the uh, the deputy creative head was his official title of the CBC from the early 90s into the 2000s, and he was the executive on shows like uh, Da Vinci's Inquest and This Is Wonderland. He's really considered a guru of one-hour drama, uh, especially procedural writing, and he'll take you through uh, the, the projects in, in his stream and really give you a good sense of what the industry wants, what you need to do to get your script up to industry standards, uh, and how to do it. You know, From square one, we're assuming everybody comes in with nothing. Um, on the feature film side, uh, we have Evan Morgan, uh, who has uh, written, uh, co-wrote the, the film The Dirties, which was one of the big hits out of Canada a couple of years back. Uh, he's on a new film right now. He's one of the, the telefilm darlings currently. Uh, we also have Ken Chubb, uh, who's one of the original developers uh, of the program. Uh, he's a renowned story editor in Canada. He was on, show, on movies like Flower and Garnet and Ginger Snaps way back. Uh, now he's semi-retired, but still uh, contributing to our school, which is great, and he's uh, a mentor of mine and a guru, no doubt, uh, in his area. Um, so really, whatever stream you're in, uh, you're going to be in good hands. You're going to have good people taking you through this. Uh, and I think you'll find your colleagues very often. You know, you're know, you going to have some impressive colleagues who really have insight and really have ideas that you never thought possible for your own work. Uh, and it's amazing what happens when uh, the ideas start flying and your brain goes to new places. The possibilities are endless. So. Um, you know that's a that's a basic summary of uh, of what we we want to offer you and uh, for those of you who are coming I'm excited to to meet you all virtually and uh, in some of our uh, in some of our uh, uh, collaboration environments and uh, and hear your stories. So at this point, John, what's what are we up to? Well, um, I think we're about ready to take some questions from the audience. One thing I, I'd like. You know, maybe you could speak a little bit more too, but um, I can touch on our experience with the importance of establishing community and engagement. And I'll let you speak um, your experience in, in teaching that and how important it is to, to writing. But just in general, in the, the online format, we've taken great efforts to foster that, that kind of engagement, which we feel is most beneficial to the kinds of learning that we do, mm -hmm. but I think probably has some relevance to writing as a career as well. Absolutely. I mean, I think what tends to happen with when writers finally get together is you, you find people who are like you. You realize uh, your brain works in a certain way that makes you want to write. A lot of people don't like the blank page, uh, but for those of us who do, uh, you know, we're imagineers of sorts, and when you, when you get thrown together with people who, like you, love the idea, love bringing it to fruition, love love the blank page. Uh, something amazing happens and, and I think you'll be surprised how excited you might get about some of your colleagues work and how much you'd be interested in collaborating with them. Uh, and we, we want you to you know, do that to the nth degree as much as you know, we might design for you if you want to communicate additionally by, by all means. And we very often find students end up working on side projects together. They just, I love that idea. Here's something I'm working on. Do you want to collaborate on this? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to be in, a, in an artist environment and specifically for writers, a writer environment where people uh, love just the idea, love, love inception and love coming up with stories. So you mentioned that, um, you know, of course, we've, we've designed the programs, um, well, this program and the courses to be perfect for students that are coming in without a lot of experience. But there might be a student out there, a prospective student, who has a little bit more experience. What are we able to do in, in, in that type of situation? Is there still value to them? Well, absolutely. I mean, we've had a lot of people with uh, amazing CVs, especially in the prose world. Uh, a lot of journalists right. have come to the program, uh, published novelists, quite a few. Um, screenwriting is an entirely different animal. You really do have to relearn some of the some of the core things you've learned in the past just to, to start thinking about what you write as a blueprint for production. This is no longer something that's just to be read. This is something that hopefully is going to get made. People need to visualize it, uh, how it's going to be brought to life, what it's going to look like. So uh, it's, it's a different animal and it's uh, 
uh, even for people who've done some screenwriting in the past, I mean, when I was starting out, all there were were the odd weekend workshops, and I didn't never felt like I, I, I knew some core concepts, but uh, you know, the exercises that we do, even in those first two terms, I think those of you with some experience will find extremely uh, useful and rewarding. And there's a reason we do them. You end up writing a short film, which you know, very often students decide to shoot, uh, you know, on their own when they're done. Um, because if you can tell a story in you know 10 pages, that's a great way to show people you might be able to tell a story in a longer format. Um, so you know, w whatever your level of experience, uh, you know, I think we have a lot to offer you. And then once again, to those later courses, working with uh, the mentors you'll be working with, um, you know, you're going to be in really good hands to to get that portfolio, uh, you know, fine-tuned and complete. Yeah, and that's. The mentor-mentee relationship between our faculty and the students, I think, is, is very important. And one of the reasons why we strive to keep our classroom sizes small. So even though students are studying all across the country, in some cases the world, there's still that very close one-on-one -on -one relationship between our faculty and our students. And um, our faculty are always encourage to engage, be available, be very responsive to students' questions, and you know, foster a diverse learning community. Because that's one of the great things about the online learning platform is that you're going to have people at all various stages of their lives. And when you're talking about producing and learning something as creative as you know, screenwriting, mm -hmm. It's going to foster a lot of um, great ideas. So we'll we'll open it up to questions now. Um, but while we do that, um, I'll just just speak very quickly a, a little bit more about our our approach to teaching online. Um, as I mentioned, we work hard to foster community. We ensure that our instructors are responsive and are working. You know in a more individualized basis with our students. Um, and as Adam mentioned, uh, we strive to teach you what you need in order to be professional professionals in the industry. You know, we many of us, many of our students, of course, are creative and have, have great ideas, but they don't have the, the real world business skills sometimes that are necessary to get your screenplay off of your computer and into somebody's hands that could actually make it into a film or a television show. Absolutely, and I mean, business skills on the creative side and on the, the pure business side, I mean, with, a lot of people have great ideas and, and great instincts. They come into the program and they're great dialogue writers already. Um, but, you know, there is very specific, there are very specific formats, uh, structural formats that, that need to be learned, and that's what people are looking for. That's what Western audiences are tend to be used to, uh, and the business world knows those. So you'll be dealing with studio execs saying, uh, "I don't like your third act," and they know what a third act is, and they know what a what a, an act two reversal is, and you have to be skilled not only in knowing what those things are, but in having you know created them and workshopped them and story edited them in the past so that you can speak that language and, and fight for your own work later on. So, you know, we teach you those biz those types of skills that will help you on the creative side. And then there's the pure business skills in terms of knowing that that first deal memo that you're signing is actually a real contract, not just because it says a deal memo on the top doesn't mean it's it's not a real thing that's, that's going to be contractually binding. Uh, we want you to know all those things, all the pitfalls that a lot of us uh, fell into. We want to make sure... Uh, uh, our students are, are well prepared and, and are able to, to navigate them as they begin their careers. Fantastic. So we have some questions. Um, the first, I think, is for you, Adam. Okay. Um, will I get to write and make a feature film? You will get to write a, a feature film. You won't get to make a feature film. Um, I'm not sure there's any program that, it, that actually lets you make a complete feature film that I know of. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty big undertaking. Yeah. And we are a writing program. Uh, as I said in the final term, uh, we're going to let you cast uh, a scene from your feature from the uh, from our acting program, uh, just to see what it's like to to have it brought to life and, and hopefully uh, work with those actors in a in a virtual environment to uh, to be able to you know direct that scene a little bit and rehearse it with the actors. Uh, but you know, students leave with polished scripts. Uh, we right now have 
Nikki Rakai just got into the Telefilm Comedy Lab with, the, with a, a feature she wrote at our school last year. Uh, just graduated a few months back. So things happen quickly, you know, and if you want to produce stuff yourself, we have other students who are focusing on their own, you know, they decide they want to be writer-producers and they're focusing on their own productions as they leave. So um, it's a very possible thing and it does happen, but we don't do it in the program now. Great. Um, another one for you and then I've got a couple, but okay. um, you, you talked to one of our attendees is asking about um, do they learn how to write about comedy and you did talk a little bit about the comedy stream but maybe you can give a little bit of details about that. We do, I mean, do we teach you how to be funny? I mean, we, we do it where we can. I mean, a lot of this is you have to you bring in what you bring in in terms of, you know, what your sensibility is, what your comedic voice is in this case. What we will teach you is, uh, you know, what are, how are these things done? How is a late night package put together as we mentioned? Uh, how is a sitcom written? And it's, uh, you know, 22 minutes of funniness at the end, yes, but it's an, a long, arduous process where lots of brains are on one idea and it's first broken out into story beats and then eventually taken to a, a prose outline uh, and finally to a script. And at each stage, people are, uh, you know, working on uh, making things tighter structurally, making them funnier, thinking of better comedic scenarios, thinking of better character moments. Uh, so when, as you learn all that, inevitably your material will get tighter, will get funnier, uh, and you'll learn the value of, you know, having these other brains to, you know, I didn't like, love that idea, but give me my own idea that makes this even funnier, even better. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a solid comprehensive stream, and as I said, I'm teaching in it, and uh, we're likely going to have uh, Max Reed, potentially, who's taught uh, for us in the past. Uh, He's uh, created, uh, well, he wrote the original script for Todd in the book, in Pure, book of Pure Evil. He wrote the pilot for Mr. D. He's a renowned Canadian uh, comedy writer and a, and a friend and a teacher at the school. Uh, whoever you end up, uh, even if it's not me, you're going to be in excellent hands. Uh, Kyle Muir is, uh, is another comedy instructor who's uh, he's currently uh, on a contract for Ubisoft as well. A lot of video game places are hiring our writers. but. Uh, uh, he's written on uh, all kinds of uh, animated and live action seri series. He was on Mother Up, the Evil Longoria series. He was on Forget About It. Uh, he was on my show, Billable Hours, originally. That's where I met him. Uh, but he's another uh, uh, you know, working writer in Canada and the States. He goes back and forth. Uh, he was a great person to have uh, mentoring you through this process. So. Great. In good hands. So we have a question about when the next intake or start date is for this program. Uh, we are still um, accepting applications for our January start date. Um, time is, of course, of the essence in that case. Um, the sooner you get your application submitted and completed, the sooner you can prepare to uh, hit the ground running when classes start on January 9th. Um, another question here on how to apply. Well, applying is easy. Uh, easiest thing to do is go to our website online.torontofilmschool.ca you'll see a apply now button uh, click on that um, by completing the form one of the most important things that's going to happen is you're going to connect with one of our fabulous admissions advisors um, admissions advisors will be able to help you you know navigate the whole process of beginning your application um, submitting your writing samples, uh, gaining admittance into the program, and then starting the program itself. Um, the admissions advisors, just like our faculty, just like our student services people and the rest of the support people that work for the Toronto Film School, are there to help you with what you need. We give a very student-first uh, focus, and they're the perfect training ground really for the customized education that you'll get right throughout the program. Now we have a question from uh, Ralph and I think this is a good one for Adam. Okay. Um, how often are the group sessions and is there a specific time of day? So, uh, and you can help me with this one, yeah. John, but I, most the, the program is uh, mostly asynchronous so there's no required meeting times on a weekly basis. We try to arrange, I think, once or twice per term uh, in, in most courses uh, to have some, a sort yeah. of collaborative session where you can actually uh, speak to each other in real time, uh, whether it's like a chat type environment or, or uh, some sort of oral communication 
you know, program. I'm not sure what we're using, to be honest. Um, but uh, however we do it, we're going to make sure that there is some of both, so that uh, you know, as much. And frankly, depending on the format, some formats I've worked on feature films and TV movies where I don't actually meet the producers until we shoot, if ever. Uh, all my notes are coming from emails, uh, and maybe once in a while we have a phone call. So. We're kind of replicating that to the extent possible uh, as we try to mirror the real, real world situation. Yeah, that's mirroring the real world is, you know, something that we strive for. But we also do want to be accommodating to um, to our students who have busy life schedules that they are trying to balance um, with their studies. So we make great efforts not to for students on campus at any particular time. Um, however, sometimes collaborating with the instructor or with their own groups, you might want to get everybody online, working together, um, collaborating. So we can definitely arrange that. There's also options of recording these uh, presentations or interactions so that you can um, use them later. Oh, so uh, another question from the audience. Is there any form of work placement or assistance in job placement? Um, so we do have a, a, a career um, development uh, person. We have uh, one person who's dedicated to, to looking for opportunities for our students. Um, to be perfectly honest, the best way students have started off their careers is by bonding with their instructors and either working with them or using their contacts and yeah. we're all happy to you know work with someone that we like and that we think is, is talented. Um, Mika Rakai who I just mentioned uh, just got into the Telefilm Comedy Lab which is basically a, a nice program where you're, they, they pay for the development of your project, they fly you to LA, they give you a story editor. Um, she's being produced by Jordan Walker, who was her instructor for, for film finance, and, and very, very well maybe years uh, as he's going to be doing it uh, moving forward as well. So, um, you know, there's the opportunities tend to come because you, you, you end up with a network for, uh, based on who your instructors are and who they know. Uh, and it's nice to have that initial network starting your career off, uh, you know, and if you're, you have good relationships with your instructors and your colleagues, um, that's sort of your base moving forward with your career and we'll, we'll help you, the admin here, we'll, we'll definitely present you with opportunities and a lot of times those opportunities lead to jobs for students or, uh, you know, internships or contest wins or, or, or whatever, but uh, really it's, uh, it's got to be both. I think you've got to also make sure you engage with your instructors and, and stay in touch with them and, uh, and pick their brains and uh, see if you can get them uh, excited about your projects. Yeah, that's well said. Um... You know, we're not the only school in the world that has a career services uh, department that helps students get jobs. But one of the things that we do differently than almost anywhere else is have those instructors that are doing amazing things in their field and fostering that kind of relationship and, and that networking between the students and each other and the students and, of course, the, the instructors. and um, you know, Adam's listed a lot of accomplishments <laughs> from various various faculty. Um, yeah, I, sh I should probably point out, um, you know, Michael Past, who teaches uh, distribution, is uh, very generally hires an intern a year from a, one of our programs, uh, and very often that turns into a perma permanent position. Um, we have certain, you know, production companies, certain, you know. Uh, Groups that just like us for certain things. With Chesler Perlmutter, for example, must have hired half a dozen uh, readers out of our writing programs uh, in the past couple of years. That's uh, as interns to start, but some of those turn to paid positions as well. Uh, readers are the people, you know, if it's a big production company, they're inundated with scripts coming from all over the world. They need a first line of people who read scripts, analyze them, assess them, do a, a coverage report, and then pass them on to the next person with a recommendation or not. Um, who do you need for someone like that? Someone with a writing and story background. So they like our school. Uh, and there's other companies like that who sort of look to us for certain types of, of positions and have sort of become mainstay first, first, uh, you know, first job options for students. Great. Um, so uh, another question that I think I will take. So how long is the program? 
Well, the program is designed to be delivered over uh, eight terms, so 24 uh, months in total. Um, the reason for that is, again, designed for the student that is living and working and balancing family commitments and, and other obligations. Um, so the way that the terms are laid out, um, they're foundational. So by that I mean if you build on the skills that you acquire as you move through the program. Um, by and large, you take three courses per term. However, there is some flexibility um, to take one, two, or three courses. Uh, in the first term, you have to take two mandatory courses. Um, part of the reason why we offer just two courses in the first term is because we want you to have an opportunity to familiarize yourself with our learning management system, with studying online, with getting better at time management to really help you uh, be set up for success. That's where our student services department comes in as well. Um, again, another means of taking a personalized approach to helping you be successful. Um, that's what we do here. We want you to graduate and achieve your dreams. And we're not going to be able to do that if, unless we help you get there, unless we connect with you. Yeah, I mean, that was, uh, if I can just add, we wanted to set up, uh, there's a lot of theoretical programs out there, theoretical film programs, which are fine and which are great, and which have varying levels of preparing you for the industry and, and, a, and an actual career. That's not generally the focus of, of most, especially university programs. They're BFAs. They're, you know, there's a theoretical mandatory component to them, so you have to learn quite a lot of film history and um, you know, there's a documentary component usually that's a bit more prevalent than, than what we have. Uh, we wanted to set something up that gets you ready to have a, a career as a screenwriter. We want people who are passionate about doing this and not just trying to please parents to, you know, get them out of the house for, for a few years, something to do. People come to this program because they, they want to start careers, so that's what we set up. And again, we based it uh, on what we wanted to know when we were starting off as screenwriters, how we would have wanted to be you know, educated and prepared for the, the real world that awaited. Uh, so that's the model here, is, is, is really just preparing and modeling the industry in our courses. Okay. So I have a question here that I think, again, probably Adam, Adam and I can both uh, answer. I'll start off, though, and the, the question is, is this course, is this program only offered online? Well, the short answer is no. Um, this version of the program it is only offered online, but there is an on-campus version. And in a second, maybe Adam can talk a little bit about some of the, the differences there. But one thing I will say is that um, as Adam and I develop these courses, um, one of the things we strove for is to make sure that as much as possible what they're learning is replicating the on-campus. Um, and that's for your growth. You know, we are getting a lot of questions now about students that are in our online programs um, about how they can, they can transfer over. So we've worked really hard as much as possible so that the courses that you take, the credits you acquire studying online, can be applied to the on-campus program. But maybe you can spend a second talking about some of the differences. Sure. Um, so, I mean, first of all, all of the online courses uh, are, are designed to be, they're, they're, they're virtually identical. They're uh, similar, same course codes. They're, yeah. they're, they're designed to be, uh, and you know, have the same names and the same assignments. They're, the same, they're similarly structured to uh, the day program or the campus program courses. Uh, in the on-campus on program, you do take um, some additional courses that are mostly just introductory production courses. So you take, you know, production one and two, picture editing, uh, courses like that, that, that uh, you know, we talk about in the online preparing your script as a blueprint for production. So in the on-campus you get to see, okay, well, now that I'm taking production one, how would I look at this script as a cinematographer instead of a writer or a director instead of a writer? Um, so you get, you get some sort of breadth courses in the on-campus where uh, you get to taste little bits of, of the production uh, world and, and try things out. There's an advanced directing techniques course. Uh, 
uh, courses, a few courses like that that sort of get you set up and get you understanding where the script fits into everything. Um, other than that, I mean, you know, the, the, there's more real-time interaction, obviously, in on-campus, so it's more of a writing room environment versus a story editor relationship. Um, so, you know, we, for the television courses, we simulate a writing room in terms of, uh, you know, that's, that's how TV shows are written. People come to a, 20 people in a room screaming ideas and pitches at a, at a showrunner or a head writer. Uh, so that's how we run our classes. Uh, you know, when it's your turn for your script, you're the head writer and you take everybody's ideas and they're of course getting participation grades for their participation and we realize that ideas flow and no one gets too ownery about anything, just the way real writing rooms work. Uh, so we replicate that environment more, but again in the online, the story editor relationship, uh, almost identical to what you would experience when writing a, a feature film. Very little contact, usually a lot of notes and emails and uh, the odd phone call or face-to-face -face meeting, but mostly, um, you know, paper notes. So either way you go, you're replicating the industry uh, just a bit more interactive in the campus program. Great. Um, so I've had this question a few times from the audience, but um, they'd like to know if they can collaborate with other programs. Um, yes. I mean, the short answer is yes. Yeah. Uh, we d we've discussed... Um, you know, uh, working with the actors in the final term, uh, the on-campus actors. Again, we have uh, what's, what's basically our version of casting workbook where you can see little <laughs> clips and audition tapes from, from various actors. Uh, so, you know, the idea is in the final term you cast from the acting program and then eventually at the end of the, of the course we're trying to figure out a, a way to have you uh, work with them either in some sort of rehearsal or, uh, or shooting scenario. Uh, you know, to have sort of a capstone uh, at the end of your uh, of your streams. Um, you know, in terms of the other programs, you're going to be there's going to be some some overlap with the production program. Again, yeah. there's some some co sets or some some courses that both programs take, so you'll meet some of them. Um, and very often, yeah, what happens is pr production students want writers, they want scripts, they want things to shoot that they like, and writers that they like their work and they can work with. Um, you know, so a lot of that happens, and, and you know, I think production students and writers tend to get along quite well because uh, you know both do something that the other one doesn't want to focus on usually as much. Um, so a lot of great relationships, a lot of great films end up getting made through that. Um, in terms of some of the other programs, I mean, we've had um, interactions. Obviously, video game. For some reason, video game. No one, yeah. no one wants someone who's been trained to write video games. They want a screenwriter. So the video game program has had collaborations with the screenwriting program in the past where they look for scripts from our program to adapt. Uh, we're trying to make that uh, more regular thing. Or they look for writers to come in and, and help formulate their ideas uh, because we end up spending so much time on structure and, and you know, f uh, completing ideas, not just having bursts of creativity, but forming them into something that's in a, you know, a tangible and, and useful and marketable format. Uh, so video games, you know, this, they tend to like the writers for that reason. So some of these things are formalized. A lot of things might happen informally. Graphic design program uh, has a standing offer to help prepare pitch materials for, for our students. So if you're preparing a mini Bible to pitch your TV show for when you leave, uh, the graphic design students are always happy to get involved. Usually their instructor might even help make this an assignment or a project for them where they can create a beautiful pitch package for you so you can leave here with something uh, to take to producers and agents. So tons of collaboration uh, across all the programs, most definitely. Great. Uh, another question for you, Adam. Um, could I be a screenwriter part time and work at my regular job? Um, yes, I guess is the short answer. Again, I mean, some people this is their their full career and they want to do this and they want to be in writing rooms. And if they are just working on developments, they want to do a million different things. Um, but yeah, others, uh, you know, they want to do something else and then have some sort of project they can work on in their own time. The good news is when you're doing. Uh, feature films or TV movies or, you know, even if you're doing television in the development stages, usually you're doing it on your own time. They, they give you a deadline, but they don't care when you work on it. Um, so if you're willing to work, you know, a, a job during the day and then at nights and on weekends you want to focus on your screenwriting, absolutely fine. You know, you may have to arrange to do a phone call at your lunch one day if the producer wants to talk to you, but uh, very doable. Uh, quite a lot of people, and they expect people to be busy. Everyone expects everyone else to be busy. so. Uh, no one's going to hold that against you. Great. So I have a question here just about um, getting admitted to the program. Um, I did mention that uh, we require a writing sample. 
Um, most of you probably have a lot of writing anyways, uh, laying around or um, on your l laptop. And um, what we're looking for specifically is two creative pieces of writing, you know, including any of the following. A short story, um, no more than two pages. Of course, we do read all of these, so um, keep it short and succinct. Opinion articles, all of these, no more than two pages. Journal entries, or short film or sketch scripts, in that case, no more than five uh, pages. Um, yeah, and I mean, we're, we don't expect you to be screenwriters yet. The, 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 the whole purpose of the portfolio is to look at, you know, basic prose communication skills, you know, basic storytelling. Uh, so if you're a prose writer, don't worry that you don't know screenwriting yet. We just want to make sure everybody's got a certain level of, uh, uh, of ability in those areas. Yeah. Um, I think that's exactly right. Many of you um, will have experience writing prose uh, in a you know, a variety of forms. Um, and that's important. You know, that's an important indicator for us of, of your future success as, as a screenwriter. Um, what you'll learn very quickly, you know, in the first lecture or two um, in something like Scripts 1 is there's a lot of differences um, between writing prose and um, writing, a, writing a script. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, we spend, you know, scripts one is, is really just focused on those fundamental differences and just reorienting your brain so that you start thinking in terms of, as, as you know, some, we have some novelists come into the program and they, they have beautiful descriptive paragraphs, um, but now you're writing, you know, for someone who's reading this and maybe there's a production designer or an art director who's just wants to get some ideas, but that they're, they're essentially going to take that over themselves. They don't need to know what's on every wall. They may not be able to get the exact poster. It may not clear. You're trying to get more of a notional sense of things and then write activity so that uh, an audience who's watching this can understand things from it instead of reading it. Uh, so it's, you know, again, it's a, there's quite a lot to it in, the, in those early stages. And, uh, but that's, you know, most film schools do, and we are no different, spend a term or two just focusing on getting the, the brain reoriented for writing for the screen. Great. Um, Just one more uh, question about the application process. So what do you need? What kind of education do you need to, in order to get into this program? Well, uh, a secondary school diploma, uh, so grade 12, uh, from a Canadian province, territory, or the equivalent. Um, if you have a college or university transcript, uh, you can use that to gain a conditional acceptance into the program. Or if you're over 18 years of age and have not completed high school, um, that's okay. Uh, you can complete a mature student test that's administered by our admissions department. Um, so there's a lot of options for, for everyone. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's, a, there's, a, there's great screenwriters with masters and PhDs. I think William Goldman is a professor at a New York University. And then there's great screenwriters who didn't finish high school. I think Quentin Tarantino is one of them. You can get a list online, but arguably one of the best, if not the best, out there right now. And uh, you know, it, this is a, it's a different muscle. This is something different that uh, in your brain, it's, it's, a, it's a different way of looking at story and telling stories. and. Uh, and, you know, we don't care who has it. So long as you have it, you're welcome. Well said. So I think on leaving off of Adam's final words, if there's no last-minute questions, um, I'd just like to thank everybody for attending uh, the Toronto Film School at Yorkville University's info session slash webinar on our Writing for Screen and Television program. We look forward to working with some of you in the near future. And if you have any follow-up questions, things that you didn't get a chance to ask, or you think of it later, the best way, go to our website, put out an information request. One of our very knowledgeable and helpful admissions advisors will reach out to you um, and get you everything you need. So thank you very much. And we look forward to helping you write screenplays.